What is up guys? We're going to be running a directory traversal attack. In particular, we're going to be seeing what to do in the case that traversal sequences don't work. Are there any other techniques that we can use? We're going to be using this lab. It's called file path traversal, traversal sequences blocked, but there's an absolute path bypass. So the goal of this lab is to retrieve the contents of the Etsy password file. And as we fire up the lab, we're going to see what exactly the issue with traversal sequences is. So we have Burp Suite fired up. We're going to add our target to the scope, we're then going to click on the filters option and choose the checkbox show only in scope items. So we're left just with our lab. Now we know there's an issue with these images. So let's visit one of these image links. And let's take a look at the subsequent HTTP request that has been captured by Burp, which is proxying the traffic. So we'll send that to the repeater. Let's head on over to the repeater tab. Now we can see it's a get request. We don't actually have the request query parameters and it's not really a big deal. We can just add those in. So the parameter is file name equals seven dot JPEG for this image. Request query parameters, we'll go to add. The name is file name and the value is 7.jpg. We'll add that to the request. So now we can see the query string as part of that get request. Let's submit that request to the server. Let's take a look at the response. Obviously we can't really read this binary data here. So we're just going to go to the render tab and there we go. We can see our image rendered in a mini browser. As we can see, we appear to be referencing the name of a file directly. So the server is looking at the query string, seeing this param 7.jpg and simply returning the image with the name 7.jpg. So the next obvious question is, which other images can we view by simply changing the name of this file? Now, one thing we could do is just cycle through a whole bunch of different numbers. We could use burps intruder tab for that. If we just do a few by hand and see if we get any results. So we can just change this value to 10.jpg, for example, apply, send to the back end. You see, we get the message, no such file. Now I'm sure if we carried on doing this, we would eventually get a match and we would get a file returned from the server. So there we go, we get some image of rather crazy looking monster truck there. So we appear to have some arbitrary read ability for a specific folder on the server. Now, where does traversal sequences come into this? Well, our target here is to get the Etsy password file. And usually if you think about the location of an images folder on a server, it's usually going to be quite a few directories in from the root directory. So what we do is start using a traversal sequence. So for example, dot dot, forward slash means to come up a directory. And if memory serves me correctly, we want to go up three directories at C password, assuming the structure is the same as one of the previous labs. So let's submit that request to the back end and we get the response, no such file. Now it turns out that no matter how many directory traversal sequences we input, we're always going to get the response, no such file. And the reason is very simply because the traversal sequence is not working. We're not successfully being navigated up a directory. So we might at this point think, okay, we can't navigate upwards. We can only really read images that are available to the general public anyway. We may as well just give up on this exploit because we can't actually break out of the directory that we're in. Well, it turns out that this is not the only way to run a directory traversal attack. For example, there are other weaknesses that could be in place here. And we don't actually need that traversal sequence in order to reach the Etsy password file. So the key to solving this lab is understanding the difference between absolute and relative paths. So what we had originally as a value for this parameter was 7.jpg. And this is an example of a relative path. That's because the server is already geared to point to a certain directory. It's already inside this images folder and it's just looking for the file with the name 7.jpg inside the folder it's already pointed to. That's known as a relative path. An absolute path, 
lists the entire directory all the way from the root directory. And one of the key differences is that an absolute path is going to start with a forward slash. Now, if the system's secure, this shouldn't really work either, but we know in this case that there's gonna be a vulnerability with this lab. So let's just navigate directly to Etsy password. And in terms of the way that Linux file systems generally work, is Etsy is going to be one of these top level folders. So if it's there, we'll find it with this absolute path. So let's send that request to the back end. Let's have a look at our response. We'll look at it in raw. And if we scroll down, we should recognize this as the contents of Etsy password. So although usually when we're thinking about directory traversal or file path traversal, we're thinking about those traversal sequences as being a core part of this. But as you can see, it's not the only way that we can find a vulnerability. We weren't able to use a traversal sequence in this lab, but we were able to make use of an absolute path in order to access the Etsy password file. The implication here is we can pretty much access any file on the system. So as you can imagine, this could potentially be a fairly large vulnerability. Well, that's pretty much it. Hope you learned a bit about file path traversal or directory traversal. Thanks very much for watching.